Hello everyone and I hope you're doing very well. Today we're doing a video about using mod control managers. So we're talking about third party mods in DCS and you, you might very well have lots of them and you may want to disable them on command rather than actually uninstalling them. If you want to, for instance, go into a multiplayer server where some of or all of these mods are not allowed. So that's what we're going to look at today. So a quick bit of background that Sly has just been explaining to me about the mods. So what used to happen is when you downloaded a mod, it would edit things in your game directory. So my game directory is eDrive, DCS World, and that's there. And that was a really bad thing because you could easily corrupt your DCS World, really easily corrupt it, and um, and you'd have to do a clean wipe or, or whatever. So it's changed now so that we've now got a safer system for installing mods. And installing mods, we would be now on C Drive, your users, and your save games, DCS, and we'd have, uh, we've got a mods folder here. And it's safe to, it's more safer to do it this way because mods are now installed into this mods folder here rather than actually overwriting the actual game directories and files. And um, so I've got one installed here. I've got aircraft and I've got the A4EC, as you know, that I have. Now, I don't have lots of mods installed because I'm lucky to ha I'm lucky enough to have all of the aircraft and, you know, the official aircraft and, and, and things. And I know most people can't do that because that's like $2,000 worth of stuff. So a lot of you guys download mods and that's fine. Got nothing against that. Um, so that's that. So a lot of you guys are likely to have 10, 20, 30 mods, whatever. Uh, but we need a way of organizing them. So what we're going to go uh, in is do that, install that live now with Sly helping us and see how it works. Anything you want to add before we go and do that, Sly? No, that all sounded good. Okay, so you tell me where to go then. Okay, so we're going to go to Hoggit. Oh, your favorite. All right, so in Google now, we're going to type wiki. We're going to type Hoggit. Pion. And we've got, uh, if I can find it, Hoggit, this one here, hoggitworld.com in wiki. I've gone into a, a Georgia at war, but I've got a search. So what shall I search at the top for here, Sly? Uh, O-V-G-M-E. O-V-G-M-E. Okay, it's come up with O-V-G-M-E as a popular modding tool for DCS. Okay. Uh, should I portable zip version or the XE download? Just go with the the, uh, the XE download. Stand by. So I'm going to save that too. My download save. And should I run that? Hey, fam. Right. I accept next, and just leave it on the default program files OVGME. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, that's fine. Pion and English. Add a short desktop shortcut. Go. I'm going to finish there. Just clean this up. Back to desktop. And it's going to have a new thing somewhere. So OV. Okay, we've got it. Clicking on it now. Well, welcome to OVGME. Configuration title. This is just a unique name. So DCS. Open. Bin. Call it whatever you want. Next is the configuration root folder. And these are a little bit different to, call, to understand. What this is asking for is browse. Um, it's asking for our C drive, our users, our user, our saved games, and our DCS. It may say DCS open beta for you. For me, it just says DCS. Um, and I'm going to click OK. That's what that wants, that root folder. It does not want forward slash mods or backslash mods. Okay. The next is the containing folder where we're going to keep our mods when they are not being used. And we need to create that folder. So we're going to be in save games. We're going to go into DCS for me. May be DTS open beta for you. Right click new. And I'm going to call it underscore. You don't have to call it this, but this is just what I'm going to call it. O V G M E um, mods. And then we're going to link to that. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, that's going to be its uh, uh, a default place for storing the mods. Then we're going to have a custom backup folder. No, no one's quite sure what this is for, but it's uh, recommended. So we're going to have a custom backup folder. It's going to be in here as well. Uh, for new folder, 
underscore O V G M E back up. And we're going to plonk that in there again. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Find that. Back up. Okay. Right, before we press go, do I have, should I move mods into the OVGM mods folder or just leave it where they are? Uh, negative. Leave it, leave it where it is in a moment and then we'll uh, delete your current ones. Uh, take a clean snapshot and then we'll go and add the mod. Okay, so I'm going to click go. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to want to do is to move our mods from their current position in Save Games DCS mods into the containing folder OVGME mods. And how we do this, we have to be very careful to make sure we get this right. So we want to ensure that it's when we turn it on, it's going to go into the right directory. So it's going to go into mods, aircraft, and then that is going to be that folder there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move that uh, so that's not copying it, it's, it's cutting and pasting back to DCS into the mods folder. I'm just going to paste that there for the safekeeping. You can see it's appeared up here. Uh, but we have to contain it within relevant folders. So we're going to go new. I'm just going to type the A4. Within the A4, we're going to have, um, uh, what was it, mods. The mods, we're going to have aircraft. I can spell that. Craft. Within that, we're going to have our actual uh, A4. So we're going to go back down to over GME mods. We're going to cut A4 mods aircraft paste. That's where it is. Back to over GME mods. So we've got one mod in here now installed. That is the A4. I'm going to double check that it's not in the actual game mods directory and it's not. So what we're going to do then is click select our mod there and select enable selected. It's going to move it essentially or copy it. Okay, that so that's enabled it. It's now enabled, it's ticked, ready to go. Uh, we're going to go to our DCS mods aircraft and A4CE. There it is. So that's installed correctly and if we wanted to unenable it we're going to go to disable selected and that is going to have removed it it just hasn't updated so oh for fuck's sake let's scratch it didn't select it so now if we want to disable it we're going to click on him here we're going to click disable selected Does up, and you can see it's disappeared it's no longer here uh, so all it's doing is cutting and pasting or copying uh, mods in and then deleting them back out basically um, and that seems like a massive waste of time with one mod like one mod like I've got here but if you've got 30 or 40 obviously this is why this something like this is uh, very useful so back so I went so it's gone from here and it's back in here okay um, so that was doing it for the A4 Skyhawk anything you want to add to that slide I know it can be a bit complicated um, doing that with different types of uh, mod yeah it can be a little bit tricky um uh most of the time so we, we'll get the mods from the um the same place the um we go to uh, dcs we go to user file download user files uh we go drop the filter to mods and then you can see all the mods that are created for dcs you can find them on the forums as well on dcs forums um it depends uh, different people um leave their mods in different states so it, it sometimes can be not quite as easy as just download the mod stick it in the folder and enable it you know, uh, you sometimes you have to play with the folders just to make sure it's going in the right place like but we did there that, yeah exactly but other than that um this is a much safer way of using your mods uh, it gives you control, so you can turn them on and off. If you want to, if you've got a mod that breaks integrity check, and you've got a private server um, that you're playing on, so you don't mind, you can use it and uh, play on that server. Then you can uninstall it uh, just with a click of a button and go play on a, a, an official, um, I, you know, IC enabled server. So it's just a, a real quick and easy way of playing with your mods. Um, yeah, that's it. Roger Sly, and I've just, uh, meanwhile, I've just jumped on the uh, download, the user files in DCS, you know, the main um, 
website and I'm just showing through the different things you can have. There's some big things, there's some small things, different textures, all sorts of stuff like that. Helmets and <laughs> the weird 3D aircraft people are put in this. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of retextures and things like that. So um, some people, uh, some it's good for squ a lot of squadrons use this. So they'll have uh, they might have like the whole client set of planes in their own squadron colors, um, all sort of all matching. Yeah. And then they just create a livery pack. You just have one folder, install it into your um, mods directory, and then you just literally turn all of those liveries on with one click. Uh, it just saves you having a massive full up liveries folder. Roger, I've um, yeah, I've, I just, I've even seen one called the SU57 with Q and A. So we downloaded that. Look, thirteen thousand people have downloaded it. It's funny. Uh, it's obviously uh, oh, I don't want to get myself in trouble, so I don't want to say. But um, obviously that won't be realistic because you know no one could get access to that aircraft. But you know it's good fun at the end of the day. So no problem with people using it. But you wouldn't be able to if you had that installed for instance you wouldn't be able to go into a most of the public multiplayer server so that's where the mod management comes in use and stuff like that but, yeah yeah exactly yeah cool all right well there you go go and download your mods and have fun do whatever you want to do and that's how you organize them um and i hope that helps and see you guys later